right there, Feinberg. Are you ready to go? Yes, I'm. Happy All right, to be great. Here, ready to Whenever play you're some ready, Minecraft. go ahead and take it away. Awesome. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna be doing a regular Minecraft any percent run, which is gonna be the dragon as fast as possible. Um, I am gonna basically do a no reset, um, as usually when playing for world record, there's like nine, 12, 15 Minecraft screens open and you're trying to find the best seed going through a ton. Um, so I'm basically gonna play the first seed that I get here um if it wasn't terrible and this is honestly perfect it doesn't look great it's just an island but it's honestly a pretty good spawn um because oceans are one of the best bottoms believe it or not even though we don't have any trees so right now i'm just looking for a shipwreck as they're one of the key structures in the run that we can get in the nether as fast as possible i think i found one but no trees is going to make this a little annoying. We'll get there. Um, but we got a couple minutes to just swim and sort of talk about the run. But I do see it sort of in the middle left of our screen here. Using a little clip to look through the water. Um, so yeah, Minecraft's been... I mean, Speedrun is a game for like a few years. But it really didn't take off in popularity until the 1.16 version came out in 2020 and that's the version that mostly everyone plays on and it's what i'm playing on right now uh, because of the way that they introduced getting ender pearls obsidian string fire resistance from bastions in the new nether update that was the whole 116 update they overhauled the nether and bastions just turned out to be like insane because before you either had to kill enough innermen to get pearls for your eyes of ender or you had to trade with the villager which are both fast but uh bastions are just too fast um and along with that we can use these ocean structures shipwrecks and buried treasures this round we're going to use a shipwreck here and we have enough gear to just let us get in the nether quickly without having to mine for anything so this is honestly perfect um i gotta think what i want to do here Let's throw these trees on this island. I could get wood from the shipwreck, the logs kind of in the side, but it would just be a little awkward with mining those underwater, having to make like a pressure plate maybe, so it's all good. And it looks like I'm swimming over a magma ravine, which is awesome. And uh, we'll enter the nether here in a little bit. Uh, it'll be a little wacky, but I'll try to explain it the best I can. Um, so this is honestly a good start. I mean, most like top level speedruns would be in the nether by now uh but for just playing a random ocean and seeing what we got this is definitely more than good enough for a no reset i'm thrilled to have everything i need to enter within the first couple minutes so i'm just going to craft my basic tools here and then some food out of this bread that i got and we're going to do a couple things with this wood I could get more than these trees. I could go over and get those, but this should be fine. I also am pretty thrilled with the amount of food that I got from this shipwreck. Seven bread plus five carrots is awesome, especially since we can make some golden carrots later on. Um, but yeah, we're just going to go right to this magma ravine. Going to get some flint here from this gravel to make a flint steel, and then we're going to build a nether portal with this ravine. Um, and it might be a little dank. I'll, I'll do it a little slow. I'll try to explain what's happening. Um, but basically, these ravines are supposed to be lava ravines, but they generate in oceans. So the lava is obsidian, some of it's magma, and we've figured out setups to where you can just build a nether portal out of the holes in the magma. So this is our nether portal. Congrats. And we are in the nether in under four minutes, which is really not bad for a no reset. Now this is where it's gonna get spicy. Looking for a spike and we actually got one. Wow, this could have went really bad. Um, so I'm gonna just scan for this here. It looks like it's this way. So I'm gonna have to go this way for our bastion. So that's gonna be the first structure that we're gonna need. We, we need a bastion and a fortress. Technically you don't need the bastion, but I mean, you don't need food technically in a run, but it, it makes it a lot better. And it looks like I can't go anywhere. So maybe I'll just dig through the wall and we'll have a nice chat about what the heck I'm doing in the nether. 
while I dig through the wall. I think that's the best. Or maybe I dig up. I think I'll try up, and then we'll do the wall if up doesn't work. But yeah, I basically used this F3 menu here and looked at the entity counter uh, in the top left to see where a bastion is. And the reason why this works is because these bastion structures have a lot of piglins inside of them uh, and potentially hoglins and other mobs um, that are specially tagged by the game to not despawn when you're too far away from them because they're like part of the structure like it'd be it'd be dumb if you rolled up to a bastion or another structure in the game and there was just no mobs in it because you despawned them so they're um specially made to have mobs that don't despawn ow sorry sir and because of that we can use the e-ray which is what i just did basically just looks for um when you're looking at entities and if we like super lower our field of view um all these piglins in this bastion are just chilling here so if i look in the top left here i'll just show you guys why not um this is like says six so there's six little dudes in my field of view like a couple of them are these guys right here and if i do this circle and then i look at the bastion it spikes to 40. and so that'll happen with almost any bastion and that means we're going in the right direction so it's basically like x-ray um but it's completely in vanilla. You don't need any axe or anything to do it. Uh, it's legal, which is awesome. And it's a base of a lot of these super fast strats uh, in 116 because you could just get a ton of info. Um, so I'm also gonna do. All right. I have to focus a little bit here because I don't want to like be slow, but I also don't want to die. Both pretty obvious, but. Basically just trying to get all these piglins. Ow, sir, that hurts. To, ooh, ow, ow, ow. Yeah, it looks like we're good. Just trying to get all these piglins in one spot together. Um, as we're gonna need to trade with them for a ton of stuff. And I did that. We got hit a couple times, but I mean we did get a large amount of food from our shipwreck, so I'm not too worried about it. And now I'm just finding all these hidden gold blocks in this bastion. Um, which is, I mean, they're hidden in the sense that they're just behind this wall, but they generate basically the same way every time. A little bit of randomness in if they decide to actually spawn, but I've done a lot of practice, and so I'm able to find these gold blocks. And hopefully, ooh, that's poison. Beautiful. I'll wait that out, I guess, because this guy's going to get mad at me here. But we will hopefully get what we need. If not, there's definitely more gold blocks in this bastion. It's just going to be annoying, to say the least. And I do need to do another thing here, which I'll explain in a bit. I get arrows, why not? We're doing an no reset. All right, there's eight pearls, it's pretty good. Seven obsidian. I really would rather have 20 obsidian. So I might, okay, get us friend. Let's do this, actually. Oh, they're fighting. Nice. Warfare. Are you happy? He's so sad. I killed his uh, purpose in life. Okay, so we have 14. Uh, that is not good. But the good news is this bastion, which is um, more commonly referred to as treasure. And I'll show you why in a second. How's there another guy here, man? Whatever. I'll take food. Name that because of the treasure area that I'm boating down to right now. Uh, has the most gold out of any bastion of uh, the four bastion types. So, honestly, this is great. Doesn't really matter. Oh, we're at diamond chest plate, why not? So we should be able to get more pearls out of all this gold. And even if this gold whiffs... There's still more gold in this bastion, um, but we'll, we'll get a couple of pearl trades off this. Oops. We'll be more than fine. I do want to look for obsidian, though. Like I said, 20 would be great. Oh, I have 18. Okay, that's actually fine. 
because the piglins do trade obsidian, so I, I will get two more out of all of these gold blocks. So I didn't realize I had 18. Maybe that's where all the pearl trades went. They all went into obsidian. So we're just gonna give these guys the rest of our stuff and get a couple more pearls. And while we do that, I'm going to use my pie chart here in the bottom right to actually try to find where our fortress is. So just like we use the key counter. Hello, I'm trying to explain something. Thank you. Sorry if that's loud. Uh, so just like we use the E counter to find our bastion, I'm going to use the pie chart to try to find a fortress, which could backfire, but it's better than nothing. This way, negative X, okay. So basically what I did is on this pie chart here, there's, uh, it's basically telling us all the block entities in the, in like the chunks that we have loaded. Um, which is like a chest, uh, an enchantment table, a shulker box, and things like that. But the important thing in the nether is that it's a chest, which is in the bastions, fortresses, room portals, but it also has mob spawner, which is only in two places in the nether. It's in fortresses, the blaze spawner, and it's also in treasure bastions, the uh, magma cube spawner that I broke down there. So because I broke that, uh, now the game was able to tell me that the direction of the closest, excuse me, sorry, the closest other spawner um, in the nether is 23 chunks in this direction. So it could be a, another treasure bastion. Uh, or hopefully it is a nether fortress and so we don't get the exact direction like uh as precise as we get with ooh, that's great slow speed whoa uh we don't get the exact direction as precise as we get it with the e-ray but it's good enough oh and there it is yep so we just go in one direction and it's good enough because fortresses are honestly pretty freaking huge uh, like this thing is pretty massive, so it, it just works out um, and I'm gonna We're gonna try to high roll this for it. I'm gonna lower my render distance, which basically Okay, there's already a lot of guys on me, but this is More dangerous or it looks more dangerous than it is because their AI is very bad like, What is this guy was looking at? I couldn't tell you. Uh, we'll do some fire here get him on the ropes See ya. So yeah, uh, lowering my render distance there means that all these blazes and all the mobs in general are going to try to spawn as close to me as possible. Uh, and because I'm in a soul sand valley, the way that mob spawning kind of works, um, Mojang didn't want you to get too overwhelmed with like skeletons and other mobs when traversing through this biome because it's kind of made for the spawns here. So they lowered the spawn rate of skellies across the board, which includes in fortresses. So we can play this Soul Sand Valley fortress like really uh, up close and personally with all these blazes, and we're gonna get a very small amount of skeletons and other types of mobs. Basically just blazes and wither skeletons. And as you see, that's kind of all we're getting. Uh, and honestly, it's just RNG. If you get more blazes or more wither skeletons, ideally, obviously, um, more blazes. But my pearl, this is actually annoying. I wanted to avoid these guys, but alas. You have a moment yeah, for the host to break in here. Absolutely. Well, first of all, I just want to do a quick thank you to everyone tonight that's been part of this tournament and setting it up for all of us so that we can have this amazing adventure together. This is the first ever speedrun Hall of Fade tournament, and it's to uh, benefit the charity NAMI. NAMI is the National Alliance on Mental Illness, the nation's largest grassroots mental health organization dedicated to building better lives for millions of Americans affected by mental illness. Find out more about NAMI at their website, nami.org. Awesome. I do love charity, and I love the cause that we're supporting today, the Spirit Hall of Fame. So I would urge you guys to donate if you're into that. And have the funds to do so. 
Absolutely, and um, same from so me. During that break, I just killed the last couple of blazes. Let's see actually what the rates were. Killed 14 and got six, so 50-50, a little worse than that, but it's all good. So we're gonna build our first nether portal here. And in most um, speedruns nowadays for world record, we use calculators to tell us where um, the stronghold is because when you throw an eye, it points to the chunk that the stronghold's in, like the, the middle of the chunk. So if the stronghold was under me, which it won't be, just statistically, and it just like physically can't based on how the game generates, um, it would point down towards the middle of this chunk. Uh, and so if we throw eyes and measure them really precisely, we can get like a super accurate line and try to find like only one or two chunks that these stronghold intersects. But that's uh, a little lame. Uh, it just depends on your thing. But before calculators, we used to do this complicated math. And I will do that because I don't get to do it anymore in runs and it's fun and it's going to be exciting to see if i um hit the stronghold or not because with a calculator you basically know 100 percent of the time there's a lot of mobs oh my god you basically know 100 percent of the time if you're gonna hit um the stronghold or not but if you're doing this the old-fashioned way and I don't know why I'm struggling so much with, like, thinking about what I'm doing. If you're doing it the old-fashioned way, um, it's pretty hype. Because I'm not going to actually know if I'm going to hit it or not until I build the second portal. And I don't know how close I'm going to be. Dude. Can I help you? Okay. <laughs> A lot of mobs for some reason. Uh, but if I throw this here... And get the angle here. I'm gonna throw it again just in case. 150.1. Okay, that's actually not bad. 4.1, 5.5. I, I could hit the stronghold as possible. Um, so, I just need to do some quick math. Oh, you're gonna go up the portal. That's a Stop! Stop! There's a fire res. There's another guy in here. Okay. So I'm currently at negative 557.11. And that was my angle change with the direction. So this should be like... 50, 49. And then 5.5. So divide by 8, we get like 6. And then, I'm just doing math in my head, I'm sorry. 33. So let's say 34. And then we were looking 160. So it's negative Z, negative X. So negative 34, negative 49. On top of that is negative 591. Um, negative 38. So... Hopefully, if I measured my eyes accurately enough, and if I just get lucky, we're going to be in the stronghold at negative 591, negative 38 right here. So I'm just going to build my second nether portal so that I don't have to spend as much time in the overworld because I guess I glossed over this, but um, one block in the nether is eight blocks in the overworld. So I just traveled lot faster and let's just hope I hit it. Ooh, minus. Hopefully we're close at least. Um let's see. Yeah this did uh this angle did change a lot. So we'll see. Could be like this chunk right here perhaps. Or maybe it's a mission. Feinberg, would this be yeah, go a it. good moment for me to break in? Oh, that's right here. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Well, first of all, thank you so much for showcasing this fantastic game tonight. I got to be honest with you. 
I haven't seen that many Minecraft speedruns, but you know who I know loves this is my son, Luke, who uh, was very into Minecraft a little bit ago, and he's awesome. telling me that you're doing a great job here tonight. So congratulations. Keep up the good work, and it's great to have you on the show. Uh, I also want to let the chat know here about another piece of our speedrun marathon tonight. If you've heard of this so far, we have a new piece of the foundation called This is the Run. This is the Run is a new way to watch speedruns. It's a site dedicated to feeding fans live p runs on PB Pace in an easy to browse format. Never miss the run again. And now it's in alpha testing and you can visit it at the website this is the dot run today. The full release is coming soon in 2023. And I just heard tonight that there are some new members to This Is The Run. And I know that I'm going to log in and check it out myself first thing Monday after the tournament's over. Maybe I'll be able to catch you doing your speed run yeah, over there sure sometime in the future. Out. Sounds like a good um, tool to watch your favorite speed runs. Yeah, I'm very excited about it. Well, I've... In that little break, I did uh, another sort of x-ray strategy to find the portal room in the stronghold that we're going to need to enter the end. And I'll go for a risky strat. Uh, I, there's no promises I'll actually hit this uh, as I'm not amazing at it. I don't practice it a ton, but it's basically called a zero cycle and i'm gonna try to kill the dragon basically before it can do anything now that's not gonna make a lot of sense um but we'll see um yeah i'll just like if it if it's not gonna work out it's not gonna work out but i'll go for it it'll be really cool if i hit it uh okay it's definitely possible I just have to not mechanically mess up. One, two, three. Alright, now as long as I don't mess up these guys, which I shouldn't. I can even be safe with it too. Ooh, broke. Unlucky. So I let the dragon get too low. But I still have enough to finish it out normally. Uh, and I have this crossbow anyways, so I guess we'll just do that. Damn, I was pretty close. Um, but that was basically the concept, is you sort of beat the dragon to the top there, but like I said, I'm not uh, the most practiced in that strat, as uh, it it did take a lot of like uh, prep time, you know, just sort of organizing my inventory and getting all the stuff in the right place. And especially with like nerves in a, in a top run the odds that you mess it up are pretty high so basically i uh just go for the high roll of getting the dragon to like perch quickly it's basically the same speed um it's just i mean it's a lot easier um and isn't really nerve dependent it's, it's not uh really as chokeable as that as i mean I messed that up and I had a lot of prep beforehand, so this shows goes to show I guess how difficult that specific strategy is. But I'm just gonna take out these crystals here so the dragon can't heal at all. Pretty old school, uh, because I did use most of my explosives on that failed zero cycle. Um so I only have three bats. Which is gonna be barely enough. If I can make it work, I'll make a iron sword also, so that I can try to finish it off a little bit faster than an axe. But I'm basically now just waiting for this dragon to cooperate and go over there and then perch so that I can use the beds when it comes down at the fountain. And it looks like it's doing that, so I'll go in. Ooh, that was not bad. Gonna need some three juicy bags. Give me close. Might have it with the sword here. Um, and if I do, it will be over. And I think because there's no crystals, I got it. 
Sorry, I'll just turn this down. Um, and yeah, that's Minecraft. Uh, honestly, pretty happy with this no reset, considering it's literally the first seed. Um, so that would be the time. Um, the real time is still ticking up. I had my timer set weirdly. Um, but the in-game time was 23 minutes and 41 seconds. Um, so that's Minecraft. Honestly, that was a really good seed um, for a complete no reset. Uh, I got a lot of food and a quick uh, shipwreck into a quick nether enter. And then even though I had to dig through a wall a little bit in the nether, we were able to access everything. And even though I missed my second stronghold uh, portal, I was literally 20 or 30 blocks away in the overworld. Um, and yeah, if I didn't mess up that zero cycle, it could have been even faster, but you win some, you lose some. Uh, I'm definitely super happy with this run. And yeah, thank you guys so much for having me on the marathon. I'm definitely happy to be underestimate because um, these runs can't go sour uh, in a lot of places. <laughs> Congratulations. What an excellent run, especially when using a randomizer with no resets. That was quite a feat. Thank you so much for showcasing that for us tonight. And Feinberg, thank you again for joining us here tonight in the Speedrun Hall of Fame Skip the Stigma Marathon. Any final words here to the chat before we have you so step off? Thank you so for watching and supporting um, NAMI, the charity, for this event. And I hope you are going to have some fun watching the runs coming after me. Absolutely. Thank you so much once again for coming, participating, and showcasing Minecraft tonight. Once again, gang, give it up for Feinberg here in the chat. And we're going to take a quick moment here to get transferred over to our next speedrunner.